and my glasses are horrible. I got to wipe my glasses off. Good morning, everyone. It is Saturday morning, September 26th, and uh, Vicki and I are live again. So it's always kind of hectic when we do a Thursday night live, Friday night live, and a Saturday morning, like three days in a row we do lives. But anyway, uh, we got some, I think I got a couple of questions for you guys that uh, I want to answer today that I think will be valuable for you. Some of you may have heard uh, this before, but actually there's one question that I don't think I've ever got before. Uh, so that's kind of cool. I feel cool. like I'm sitting on your lap. <laughs> yeah, we are. Uh, no, we don't need to be that close. <laughs> anyway, uh, Vicky's obviously watching. Thank you for turning the volume down without me having to tell you You're welcome. this week. I appreciate that. Uh, so um, anyway, I want to go over those two questions. Right in front of the microphone. I want to go over those two questions, and then Vicky's got something to say. Uh, I do. You said you did. Okay. You never don't have something to say. Actually. You are one to talk. <laughs> uh, so anyway. Things it's are going too, well. It's too bright outside. We are always in here in the morning on Saturday yeah. morning because it's so bright out there. It's blinding. Yeah, I like to. I'd rather be out there, but it is uh, the sun shining right on the table right now, so it doesn't get shade there till in the afternoon. Although we could be back there somewhere, but anyway. Um, so, um, you want to tell me when Do to when, tell Do me it. when to go it. start? Okay. All right. So. I uh, got a question from Tony, and this is one I've answered in the past, but it's been a while. Uh, Tony asks, where do you get your screw eyes and your S-hooks? <laughs> she said be nice. Um, so, let me show you what he is referring to. Let me see. Hopefully this won't come apart. Hopefully so you won't smack me in all the head of with my, it. Uh, all of our signs, most of the... the um, the household signs and stuff, we connect them with screw eyes and S-hooks. In the past, Dad used to use key rings in, in place of the S-hooks, but I never really liked the key rings. I like the S-hooks and then close them up. I like these are closed up, but these, I, uh, I have to move them every once in a while. Well, actually, that one's closed up over there, but I like the S-hooks and the screw eyes. That's when I was up in Oatman, Every sign that I sold, I, uh, I supplied S-hooks and screw eyes. So uh, Tony was asking where I got them and uh, information on them. So the last time I bought them, it's actually been years. I don't, I don't use that many anymore because I just don't sell that many signs. But I was going through hundreds of them a month up in Oatman when I was uh, selling signs. But anyway, so what I've done is these are basically the sizes... I just kind of taped them on here so you guys can see. And I'm going to give you all the information. Now, you can probably find these at your local hardware store, your box store, all of that. But just to give you guys an idea of what I've been using for a long time. There's a glare on your tape. That's why. Um, oh, because I just put scotch tape on there. Um, so, the S hook, number one, I get them from, uh-oh, where's my paper at? I get them from Androck Hardware. I just buy them online. Again, it's been many, uh, several years since I bought them, since I've needed to. But here's the information on it. Androck Hardware. And on the screw eyes, let me know if that shows up. On the screw eyes, um, 5212 is the number that I'm using. And they're just a little less than an inch long. Oh, I can hold it. I can hold it up closer. A little less than an inch long, five, 15 sixteenths long. And um, then the S hooks are about one inch long, and that is uh, what, 172 1 is the part number. So those are the part numbers I use. Now, Androck makes, um, gosh, lots of different sizes. You guys can get whatever you want. Now, when I bought these, I was buying them in bulk, um, a thousand or more at a time. For you guys, um, they, they may sell, sell boxes of 100. Honestly, I don't know. It's been 
so long since I bought them. But that's all the information on the um, on the screw eyes. And you can see when I held up that chain of signs, a lot of people might be concerned that they won't hold enough weight. They'll hold plenty of weight as long as you don't oversize. Uh, make sure you drill the right size hole which I'm not sure what size hole that is, but make sure you drill the right size hole for those screw eyes, and those things should last for a long, long time. Charlie Rooster said, I'm glad you showed the backside of your sign. I have a question about putting personal marks on your work. What do you recommend, rubber stamp for business cards or something else? Oh, that's a rubber stamp. That is a rubber stamp that I've been using. I bought that 15 years ago, had our local... I don't know. Well, at least 10 or 12 years ago, I had our local um, rubber stamp company uh, literally take my business card and kind of reproduce it on a rubber stamp. But that's uh, that's how I've always done it. Um, you can, you know, there's lots of different ways to do it. You can tape your card on the back. I used to put labels with our information, but those things will peel off. Cards will fall off. That is going to be there forever. So, unless they sand it. Well, unless they sand it. That's true. But you'd have to sand quite a bit to get all that off of there. But anyway, I, I generally put that on. Um, sometimes if it if you find your rubber stamp, here's a uh, just a note for you. If you find your rubber stamp kind of bleeds into the back of the board and causes a little bleeding, then what you can do is put a quick, one quick coat of your clear on there, then rubber stamp, and then put some more clear on top. That should uh, eliminate bleeding into the back of the board. I never really had that issue on the cedar. This, that's what this is, is. But uh, I have heard that, and I have had it with pine. Um, so I'd put a real quick coat, coat of coat of clear, and then put my rubber stamp, and then more clear Steve on top. Steve Frum said he gets a box of those, uh, I guess S hooks or screws or something from Home Depot, a hundred per box. Yeah, and they have them in bulk there too. Bulk for Androck is like 5000 at a time, but for Home Depot, yeah, you can buy them. Uh, but, you you know, you might check whatever you it is you get. Check with Androck. I have no affiliation with Androck. They're not a sponsor or anything. They're just who I've been buying from for decades. Yeah, probably 20 years at least. Tessa says she uses a stamp like you would use on a mail, when mailing a letter. You know, those... Yeah, Stamps. yeah. As long as the information is there that you want them oh. to have, that's the main thing. Pam Barry said she had a branding iron made. Yep, and that's very, very popular these days. In the old days, branding irons were super expensive, but uh, anymore, there's quite a few people doing them, so they're not not near that bad. And uh, Dad even has bought them where they're electric, where you plug them in. Matt Marlin said he has a brand that you heat up. Yep, and that there's nothing wrong with that. That's terrific. That's great. I, I I was using a rubber stamp uh, just because it was so cheap. And uh, honestly, I was doing a lot of signs. Uh, the, the branding iron's great, but it's not that practical if you're out there carving on site unless you pre-make your boards up and you've got the backs all done and all you're doing is the surface. But that gets kind of tricky because then if you get some black, which, you know, I was basically covered in black all the time when I was... You know, I'd come home, I would be just covered. You'd look in, like a in, raccoon. It was crazy. So uh, the back of my signs, I basically had to sand them off as I was making them. The problem with the, the branding iron is, you know, you'd have to keep it hot all the time. And uh, from a practical standpoint, doing that when you're doing 15, 20, 30 signs at a time while people are waiting, um, it gets a little cumbersome. A rubber stamp is super fast much more efficient for that operation and that's what Matt I've always Marlin done. said before that he was signing with a magic marker yeah whatever it takes get get your information on the back there because that's how you know uh, customers a year or two down the road will find you so good so if you have any more questions let me know on that second question uh, this one is really interesting so you guys know we use the layout letters and hopefully this will show up I just want to show a couple of our layout letters. These are inch and a half Clarendon. Let me see if they uh, they show up. It, there's a yeah, delay. Yeah. There's a, like a five or ten, ten second delay. Go. Oh, yeah, they're showing up. Good. So uh, if you look at the edge of the S, anywhere there's a serif. These are called serifs at the top and the bottom of these letters and at the edges. 
the ends. They're straight lines. Well, if you really notice my the way I carve inset letters, um, they're not straight lines. There's a little curve to them. And um, Mike McKnight said, when you carve the bottom of the A, uh, you seem to go across the letter in a rocking motion rather than straight across. The same is to be true on the S's, drop down portions of the T's. Uh, I was just wondering why you do that. Don't get me wrong, I like it. I was just wondering why. Well, that's a really good question. I don't know that anybody's ever asked that before. Uh, the reason is, that's the way we've always done it. Dad started carving um, the, the letters, the inset letters, way back when in the 70s, and that's what he decided to do. I think that the reason, I've never really asked him point blank why he did that, or if I did ask him, I was a kid and it's been so long that I can't remember. My feeling is he did it because for two different reasons. Number one, he wanted to be able to identify a sign that he did from a ways away. And that was so unique. Nobody else was doing that. Everybody was carving those straight lines on the serifs. And he wanted to be able to recognize right away one of his signs. And, and to... Kind of a signature move. It was almost like a signature thing. Back in the old days, we used to drop down the tail of the Your R's. Um, this one? Up, they want to do. Yeah. Oh. Um, so it, it, it was kind of a signature thing, like Vic said. It was kind of a signature thing. He wanted people to be able to see them. He wanted to be able to recognize his signs from a long ways away. So any place that there's a flat serif, he just put a little dip on it. The second reason, in, in my opinion, even more so, I, the reason I liked it is because, honestly, they're easier. They're easier. Anytime you have a straight line, you guys know, especially starting out, anytime you have a straight line, the chances for mistakes are very high. And um, when I'm doing inset letters like this, especially if I'm carving them fast on site, I like to be able to just make that real quick dip and not have to worry about those straight lines. Huh? Away from your place. Oh, okay. Not have to worry about those straight lines. And again, I like the way it looks. So it's kind of a personal preference. Now, do I do that on outset letters? No. On outset letters, I do the straight lines. Uh, well, yeah, like on the make a wood sign that I just showed. I do it on uh, on outset letters, unless they're frontier, unless, you know, they're a, a Western letter. But on the Clarendon, I definitely make those straight lines. But so that, those are the biggest reasons that I just kind of kept that tradition going. I wanted to be able to notice my signs if they were inset letters, uh, be able to recognize them, and uh, they were just easier, and I think they look better. I think they just kind of adds a little style to them. So that, you know, kind of the, that was the long version of a short answer. <laughs> <laughs> and which I is never have something which is, that less is it's typically my way. <laughs> mm -hmm. But that's it. Okay, you're up. That's it. That is okay. it for me. So does anybody have any questions? Let's see. Uh, oh gosh, I've got my lid on wrong. I'm not showing my logo. Oh my Terrible. gosh. Terrible. All right. Are you guys ready for the... Life question? <laughs> that oh, seems that's to be right. what we're life, calling it. Life question. And boy, he said a great signature for his this his signs. Traditional signs are great. Thank you, Anna. Okay. Okay. Here's our life question. I'd like I'm not gonna move it away from you. Just see what you did. You messed it up. Oh. Okay. I just want to be able to see it too. We have this battle thing, and it's not just on here. We have this battle thing all the time. That's why my knuckles are all scarred up. <laughs> oh, from hitting yourself. Yeah, whatever. Anyway. Uh, let's see. Okay, here's a question. So, well, let me tell you. When I was a kid, I can remember, uh, like, my dad and my brother would go fishing for weekends at a time or whatever. And during that time, my mom and my two sisters and I, we would camp out in the living room. And uh, mom would sleep on the couch and us girls would have our blankets and pillows and we would watch Star Trek. We would, or any old sci-fi. What was the other one with Gerard? Um, 
Gil Gerard, um, gosh darn it. Starship, uh, Bat Battlestar Galactica? Battlestar, I don't know, it wasn't Battlestar Galactica. Anyway, we used to sit, we mm. would do just like marathons of Star Trek and old white sci-fi movies. Really? I didn't know that. Yeah. We were, really? Yeah. It was, That's we had, why you and, never would watch Star Trek with me I after we so. got married. And then uh, my mom <laughs> would, uh, we would eat junk food. It was just like our weekend vacation while dad was gone. Anyway, so my question is, what are some memories of the stuff like that that you have? What did you guys used to sit and watch as a family um, that you remember that you would like to share? Buck Rogers, that's it. That's oh, exactly what it was. Was that a series? Yeah. Okay. It had Erin Gray. She was the girl. Buck Rogers. Um, it's so funny because when my mom was sick before she passed... We would sit and watch TV at 2, 3, 4 o'clock in the morning, and we watched Buck Rogers. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. Eric seems like you're walking a thin line today. Be careful. And Rob says, I know why Eric takes karate self-defense at home. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So can you guys think, can I get Eric's cup? No. Sorry, Charlie. Somebody made that for Eric. Yeah, Who this was, was actually, uh, this was a, a gift. Um did I write it on the bottom? I try and write it. You no, might not have said it. Somebody yeah. made that and sent yeah, it to Yeah, someone Eric. actually made that and sent it to me. Let's see. Uh, Ann Murphy said Buck Rogers. Gil, Gil, and Gerard. Gil Gerard. I remember yeah. that. Stephen yeah. from Combat. I don't remember. Glenn Showalter. Archie Bunker. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Well, that Boy. wasn't really sci-fi. Right? No, that wasn't sci-fi. Oh, but that, they're answering questions. Questions, yeah. yeah. Right. Um, Hee-haw. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. We used to watch Hee Haw. Dad was actually on the set of Hee Haw a few times in the crowd when uh, there was performing. Charlie Wooster says, I'm watching MASH 4077 with my mom. Uh, yeah, we used to watch MASH. Yeah. Terry Lambert. Oh, hi, Terry. Hey, Terry. Disney movies that were on every, every week. week. Yeah, oh, there, man. Was a, That's yeah, there right. was a they Disney did. was on like Friday nights or something. Nancy Peterson, Dad would watch Lawrence Welk, and we had to watch it. Hated it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's funny. We used to watch Lawrence Welk, too. We used, also used to watch Westerns. Dad loved um, John Wayne and all those old Westerns when Dad was home. he was. My dad, I think my dad worked swing shift. He was a prison guard. He worked nights, so we, we got the TV most of the time. Yeah. We Anybody never else? did watch Lawrence Welk. Dad couldn't. That mom and dad just weren't Lawrence Welk fans. We watched it. I that just was liked mostly the country music. Uh, Tessa said there were eight of us, all different ages, so really hard to get us all together. But everyone liked Mash. Oh, yeah. and Red Skelton! Red I remember Skelton Red Skelton, Skelton too. Yeah. You know what's? It's sad, but it it's kind of sad. Is the kids coming up in age? You know, our grandkids and stuff. They will never know those shows, and those were good shows, good clean shows. Well, yes and no. If if somebody takes the time and shows them, they're all on the internet now, which we didn't have the availability. We didn't have mm -hmm. that option. But the, all that stuff is out there. You know, Nick at Night and all that stuff is out there um, and on the internet. And says, watch Dukes of Hazards and Charlie's Angels. Yeah. Yep. High school hockey yeah. tournaments, deep fried shrimp, popcorn, and pop. Ooh. Ooh. That sounds yummy. All the chairs in front of the TN. That's yep. awesome. Yeah. We would sit around... The breakfast table and listen, listen to radio um, programs. Uh, uh, question, Dave, your question is yes, you can get ten templates for the set of a for, for the price of a set, but you have to call me. You cannot do that on the on the website. Yeah, it's not set up. For no. It. Yeah. We would. I remember we would <clears throat> sit down to dinner, and Dad would eat and leave, and then we'd sit around the table, my mom, my sisters, and brothers, and I, and talk. And it was like our dessert was bread and butter. <laughs> we'd sit and we'd eat bread and butter for our dessert. Really, just bread and butter. Just bread and butter. Yeah. We would have bread. We would have butter on bread, and then uh, like sugar cinnamon mixture on top oh, of yeah. it, and eat it that yeah. way. Yeah. Wouldn't even have to toast it. It would just be bread Tessa and butter. Tessa said bonanza. My mom named mm. me after a girl that little Joe shot, and she went blind. Really? That's yeah. interesting. Wow. Uh, Patrick Dunkley. Hi, Patrick. Hey, Patrick. Just popped in. We watched Carol Burnett episodes with the kids. They loved it so much. Yep. Oh, my gosh. Yep. That's still... Carol Burnett episode, and it is my favorite, and wow. I see it every the once elephant. in a while. With, 
with um, what was his name? Not Harvey Corman. Uh, Tim Conway doing the elephant thing. Do you oh remember my gosh. who was sitting on the other end of the couch? Dick Van Dyke. Dick Van Dyke. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've watched that. Every time it comes up, I watch it. Yeah, uh, that thing is. It, millions and millions of people have watched oh, that. Oh, yeah. That t- but they were all, I mean, all, the all Carol Burnett, Burnett show was just yeah, with awesome. with Vicki Lawrence yeah. and all them. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Lyle Wagner and all those people. Abbott and Costello, yep. Yeah. Yep. yep. Rap Patrol. I don't know what Ooh, Rap Patrol was. Rap Patrol was, was good. That was, was it, it was a military thing. And Rap Patrol, they had this, uh, this Jeep with a machine gun on the back. And uh, they literally, every, every time they... The guy got up there and started... That was kind of before my time, but I remember it. There was this Jeep. It was an army thing. There was this Jeep with this gunner on the back, uh, a machine gun mounted gunner on the back, and man, that that machine gun was cool. (laughs) It was cool. That was Rat Patrol. Yeah. Oh, gosh. That's so funny. I still... I I love to sit and think about stuff like that. Roy Rogers. Roy Rogers. That goes back. Yeah. Every night after supper, we would sing songs and harmonize. My brother would play guitar, and I... Who's that? Deanne. Deanne And I would pretend to play piano on the footstool. Great memories. Glenn Miller and Lawrence Welk. Alfred Hitchcock. Yeah. Alfred Hitchcock. Nancy, I I did like the mouse topo. GGO. Oh. On Lawrence Welk. On Lawrence Welk. I don't know. I don't remember that. I don't remember that. I, remember I just that. remember Bobby and Sissy. I remember that. Um, Hogan's Heroes, yeah. Talking 18. about Carol Burnett, there was a clip that I saw with Harvey Corman where they were doing a take off the Carol Burnett show. And they had all these ladies and they were introducing themselves. And Harvey Corman was dressed up as this blonde in this long dress. It was a, it was a satire on Lawrence Welk. Anyway, uh, Harvey Corman. <laughs> <laughs> and these, all these pretty ladies with these big bouffant hairs were naming themselves going down, and then he got to Harvey Corman and he said, Becky. <laughs> it was hilarious. Uh, Grizzly oh Adams gosh. and Bonanza, Ed Sullivan. Yeah. Uh, Good morning, Ophie. Morning, Ophie. That's our granddaughter. You guys want to see Ophie? Come on, come on. Get on over here. A little bit. A little bit. Only a little bit. Green acres, yep. Good morning. Yes. Get down here. Oh. You got to get down here. You'll so, see yourself on camera here in a second. It's, it's a, like a five second delay. So um, this is Ofi. Hi. Sophia, I guess. Peanut. Peanut. Yeah. yeah. Oh. There she is. She's our number one worker, especially when her mom's out of town. Yep. Rachel's out of town, so Ofi's running the laser room. Yep. Did you need something, baby? Nope. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Go okay. to work. Back to work. <laughs> Remember the Saturday morning cartoon lineups back then? Oh, man. We yeah. used to get up oh every morning, gosh. and we Saturday had to do our cartoons. chores before we could watch cartoons. Saturday morning man, cartoons. Let me tell you. It was amazing. Yep. Yeah. All right, All right guys. guys. It is time to say goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> that was, yeah, that was Carol Burnett. Carol Burnett. Yeah, it's that, time yeah, to yeah. <laughs> Pull on the ear. Oh gosh, we're old. Yeah, Ophie's uh, got beautiful hair. She's a beauty. Love the hat; it's funky. That's that's Ophie. She's yep. a little funky girl. Yeah. Anyway, guys, you have a great weekend. Enjoy the rest of your day. We've got things to do. Yeah. And um, any see. questions about any of the stuff I talked about or anything, you guys, uh, please uh, email me Eric at makerwoodsign dot com, and. Um, I'm happy to answer any question to Andy Griffith. Uh, great, great show. Um, so tomorrow morning, like I mentioned last couple of days, tomorrow morning will be a, a senior moment. Me and Dad out on the lake again. So uh, and Dad's new uh, trolling motor setup. Uh, I think you guys will like that. It's kind of cool. And um, then you Monday. You too, Patrick. All right, you guys, we're out. So we will, uh, you guys have a great weekend. Thanks so much. Give us a thumbs up. uh, Spread the word for us. We'd love it. And uh, we will talk to you soon. Love you guys. Have a great weekend. Bye.